are a lot. And our expectation is that as Ghanaians, our people who rely on this industry will all join and make sure that the National Chocolate Week is a success and will help grow Ghana. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Walker, well, before you take your seat, if you can, in about two minutes, sum it up in three. Or do you want to speak Fanti? <laughs> Try Fanti for us. Try Fanti for us. Oh, OK. I, I, I was tempted to speak cheese there. <laughs> I was here for the air can eat yawa. Ghana has a Osha or Mino, a dear idea for memo at the Kwaman on it. The Cassia Pa didn't fast what they bring you pay a woman, you know, a cuckoo. Now, cuckoo no, sir, yes, so cuckoo a banana at the Kwaman on here. Sika in your free mono, Isa. In your who be here, sir, you be to me, a dad demo, Nasia dad demo, we are, and no, no, Sika free mono. A bano, a sukakra, a saint, senka, a duke who beans in the becoke. Nancy was saying, Yankas ye memuano, and ye may never free cuckoo muno, ye nibi. In tea a ya and shaman for sukrain crying, say, on Babano Mabesh, ye free juma, a wo, ye mem has his own dana cuckoo. Where's a suntino, enna, a bind, a dear sea, or say, Yan shan ye mod de ru, a mentress will be a bemuse. Coco no crano, ye dear, and answer near medic cuckoo, ye see dear. And for so a free mobile, a dorsum pa. A sans and for so a free mobile, a dorsum tino. A bad boy, me a poem, ding, a to me a genie. Now, fair yet to me, a cicat to one sweet of the cocoa, and a queer for any one while down could quail you, man, or one sweet to me, and walk a seer, a dear free mo. It is anchor, nanky, the chocolate day, a Valentine's day, down on fourteen tino. Say, say, dear Bemo, if you are seer, a year, and ra. If you want to see a year, you can see a year. 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 You can see a chocolate. You can see a year. 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 Chocolate in your nibby is sans a hot new. A hot any dan chansoir. It did chocolate new year. A boy me or my nose a ye. Now, while we are centurion, mutier me, and a gunner for our mobile on the room. Ya catch us a woody chocolate no, no way tram for knee. Now they are too social media. No watching a gunner for say, 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 dear, dear, cuny, you know, you did chocolate. A boy me a poom dear to me, Gina, now what dinner to me a cost. Your banks are alcohol, no good ink it and one. Over my chocolate free, your war. Transport companies are Okoa, who's been your bureau. Now, what a tequashi interchange hosts here. I be a friend chocolate city. Yes, I be a crubby near Quaco TSU or Debbie. Young yet, show must who do her. We be must Oko on a crown if you are saying a tear, Sarquen, your fast of the dad demo near. Said you will be also the chocolate crown, said the tear crown. No swim who said the tear, naying in an air cost. Your uncle for scrawl to chocolate or what on Sabbath to me. I can be to wait any SS a gun of winning and for whom it does. Vivi um, Boafo is the Head of Public Affairs at the Ghana Cocoa Board. Vivi, we thank you for that quick um, update. While we sanitize the podium, we're going to prepare for uh, Dr. Patrick Kumar Boaje, who will shortly join us with the third update. The second update is an, may I say, enhancement of some of our air travel guidance notes. Um, and I want to share them with you, as have been issued by the Ghana Airports Company Limited. Now, uh, the old rules apply except for the following amendments. Airlines who board passengers without PCR results or who transport or disembark passengers with positive PCR test results into Accra will be fined $3,500 per passenger. Ghanaian residents who depart Ghana and return within one week will no longer be required to present a COVID-19 result from the country of departure. They will, however, undergo mandatory COVID-19 testing upon arrival in Ghana. Passengers will be subjected to the mandatory COVID-19 test at the airport terminal at a cost to be borne by the passengers as indicated as following. Ghanaian and ECOWA citizens now, effective, I think, um, 8th of February, 6 p.m. Uh, UTC, pay $50. All other passengers will continue to pay the $150. And this must be paid before embarkation. And if that doesn't take place, the airline will be sanctioned uh, for it. Um, Non-Ghanaian passengers 
may be refused entry and return to the point of embarkation at a cost to the airline if there's no proof that they have complied with these guidance notes. Ghanaian passengers will have their passports seized, the passenger handed over to the state security agencies and taken into a 14-day mandatory quarantine at the designated location at the passenger's cost. That is for those who, for some strange reason, it is found that they have not complied. The airline will be surcharged and the individual will also uh, face the measures that I have just mentioned. All arriving passengers who test positive for COVID-19 will undergo mandatory isolation and treatment at a designated health facility or isolation center at a cost to the passengers except Ghanaian citizens. I want to take that again. All, Ghanaian pass all arriving passengers who test positive for COVID-19 will undergo mandatory isolation and treatment at a designated health facility or isolation center at a cost to the passengers except Ghanaian citizens. At first, the state was bearing the entire cost. This is um, an amendment of the guidance note. So please do take note and let uh, the world know. Mm -hmm. Now, for passengers who are transiting and transferring through Accra, they will not be required to take the COVID-19 test in Accra. Transit passengers will be required to adhere to COVID-19 testing requirements for the destination countries. Some category of persons are exempted from this. Airline crew, as has been advertised already, are exempted from the pre-departure and arrival COVID-19 testing and should follow the airline policy for testing. There's a separate policy for them. They'll have to follow that one. Children under five years of age will not be required to undergo testing on arrival at the Kotoka International Airport. Passengers who arrive under emergency circumstances, such as diverted flights, will not be required to undergo testing if they do not leave the airport or remain in isolation in their hotel. Children between the ages of 5 and 12 years will be required to pay for testing at the new rates. That is the new rates that I've just uh, outlined. And then very finally, for passengers who are departing the Ghanaian jurisdiction, passengers will be required to adhere to the COVID-19 testing requirements for their destination countries. Departing passengers will undergo temperature screening at the entrance of Terminal 3, and passengers are advised to arrive at the airport at least about four hours before scheduled departure time to enable all of these COVID uh, protocols to be adhered to. Mm -hmm. So that's a quick um, amendment to our air travel guidance notes that I uh, would like to share with you this morning. I want to invite Dr. Patrick Kuma Abwaje to give us a quick update on where we are on COVID, whether the situation is getting better or is getting worse, and then um, some of the surveys they've been conducting and also share with us the outcome of those surveys. Doc, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Minister. Um, today, we're going to give you a regular update. And we'll cover the epidemiology of the medical situation, the distribution of cases and recoveries, um, case on admission, the risk, uh, response to and then go to International Airport. And finally, we've done a couple of surveys on the adherence to the protocol, including some churches that we visited. We'll share the findings and then provide necessary guidance. Averagely, we are reporting about 600 to 700 cases uh, in Greater Accra, and Greater Accra still remains the one with the highest cover. Usually, about 60% of all the cases are in Accra. And they are mainly located, as was as always remained, the Accra metropolis and the adjoining districts. We still have an increasing number of workplace outbreaks now, because now it's moved from the family outbreaks into the workplace outbreak, and so we need to look at that. There's also recorded some decline in international travel. For example, yesterday we tested 953 passengers with two positives, so that's quite an impressive reduction so far. The correct use of face masks in Greater Accra has significantly improved, and we can do more. So after the 6th of February, we have recorded about 73,003 cases. We've conducted 814,000 plus tests, leading to about 26,114 per million tests. 
of population with a cumulative positivity of 9. You can see that the cumulative positivity is going up from about 8.2 to 8.4 now to 9 percent. We had about 89 percent of this number discharged. We have recorded 424 deaths and um, with active cases of about 5,515. Majority of the active cases are in Greater Accra, as I mentioned, 17 percent in uh, Ashanti and Western. Currently, all 16 regions have active cases and uh, 243 districts, which means that we have about, still about 17 districts that has not reported any case yet. For this current reporting period, about eight regions did not report any case at all. We have done a lot of contact tracing. They listed about 12,000 since January. And we have followed about 11,926. And 576 of this number have tested positive, bringing the positivity among contacts to about 4.8%. As you are uh, aware, we are talking about the new variant and the current statistics as based on the analysis that was done both from uh, passengers and population. We have, I'm going to take you through what it is. The analysis, uh, as at November, there was no new variant uh, in Ghana. About, about, about 90 viral sequences was done. In December, we discovered the presence of the UK variants in patients were detected. In January, when we did a mandatory quarantine for at the KIA, we saw about 45 percent of those quarantined had a UK variant. 15 percent had a South African variant. This is a percentage, but in natural fact, it comes about one. In the travelers, in January um, 2021, the UK variant was found in patients in Greater Accra, about 88 percent, 90 percent in Takwaradi, and 25 percent in Tamale. So far, no South African strain has been detected in the local patients in Ghana. So, so that is what you have shown there in the chart. If you look at the next slide, which shows that the epic curve, epidemiological curve. You can see that this current wave is going up. Um, it's remained stable up there. We are hoping that with improvement in our protocols and adherence to uh, hand washing, social distancing, and mask wearing, and of course with the, uh, with the implementation of the new restrictions, we should expect that if we all follow, it should come down. And the same shows are the moving average of um, the cases. That is now doing about 600, has remained around 600 for a while now, in the last few days. Let's hope that it stays down and starts coming down. But that will depend on what we do. And that's quite important that we do that. The next slide shows the active cases against the, the total number of cases ever reported. You can see that Greater Accra. Ashanti, Eastern, Central, and Western still remains the, the dominant area where we reported so many cases. You can look at the monthly distribution of cases. You can see that uh, still Greater Accra accounts for a significant number of the cases uh, at all times. And the active cases, as you can see, has reached a, a level that we've never reached before. We can see that it's really uh, gone quite high. And so we need to really make sure that the numbers start coming down so that the number of active cases will also come down. Equally, the number of tests continues to rise in response to the number of positives that we are getting as we do additional contact tracing to in response to the high numbers of positive cases. And we peaked almost about 4,500. We're doing about 3,750 currently a day. Now, the age distribution of the cases, these are in percentages. If you look at um, 0 to 5, it's about 1.3%. 1.3% 1 
of all the positives are as for this year are in the the children age zero to eleven. But if you compare with uh, incidents in 2020, you can see that's only a marginal increase. If you look at the five to fourteen, there's a slight increase in 2020. Of course, looking to about 3.9 percent compared to 3.1 percent. 15 to 24, you've seen a reduction, a slight reduction from 17% in 2020 to about 13% of the proportion of those who are positive now belonging to that class. In the area of 25 to 44, which is the most active group with number of cases, the percentage has remained the same, There's no much change. But if you go to 45 to 60, that's when you see that we have a more people, aged people in 2020 who are positive and those above 60 who are positive compared to what we had in 2020. This could also uh, present, uh, explain why we also, in addition to the new variant, uh, we have more people fallen sick because of the age changes in the number presenting. So for today, we have recorded 675 cases. Probably the first without, below 700 in the last almost eight to 10 days. They came from 44 districts and eight regions and the airport. Greater Accra recorded the highest number of 84.8% .8 of all of them came from Accra. Um, in 13 districts and our metro, uh, Greater Accra recording the, the highest amount. Ashanti recorded 99 new cases from nine districts with Oforukrum recording the highest uh, number of cases. And must say that Oforukrum and Ayawasu West, it is because of the location of the labs and the way it is reported. It doesn't mean that Ayawasu West is the, 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 the and Oforukrum is the dawn of uh, COVID, but it's the, the reporting practice because of the labs. Eastern region had 52 cases, mainly from Upper Menyakrobo, then Chembo, Jabin, South, and Ebuakwa. Western region had 35 new cases from Takwa, Mpoho, Ahanta West, Wasa East, Jomoro and Zema, and Wasa Amemfi. Volta region reported 50 new cases. Um, Ho had five, Ho Hoi 29, North Dai 15, South on one. Central region reported 10 new cases. Uh, in Upper Denchra East and Western, eight new cases from Bia, Trebo, D1, and Sefi also, that's Western of uh, four. In Bono, we have 13 new cases. 13 new cases in Sunyane, Doma Central, and Brekum West with two. Doma Central had five cases. At the Kutuka International Airport, on the 5th and 6th, we reported five new cases. And as I said earlier, Bono Ahafo, Ahafo, Bono East, North East, Northern, OT, Savannah, and Upper East and Upper West did not report any case on this date. Our total number of cases on addition across the country is 267 for COVID. We have 29 of them being critical and severe cases about 111, and the 127 of them are mild to moderate cases who are currently on admission. Let's go to the KIA um, International Airport. Yeah. We have so far reported positives of about 1,158 so far with a predominantly male 61% and 39% being female. And of course, um, a significant number are non ghanaians 60% against 40% Ghanaians. And so far, we've tested about 157,000 uh, cases with a cumulative positivity rate of 0.73%. So you can see that even the positivity rate is still lower than the general population in Ghana. As we said, we picked somehow in, then we had a lot of large cases in December and January. But in the last, since February, we received some uh, reduction as it shows on the daily 
positives that are recorded. And in the next slide, I show you that in January we have 430, as against 46 in September when we reported. So far, at the end of the first week of February, we have recorded 27 positive cases. So we are hoping that if the trend continues, we we'll record much lower figure than January and December. Update from the schools. I believe that um, there have been a lot of talk about this. We've had um, upper senior secondary school outbreaks in um, Upper West, Western Greater Accra, and Eastern region. 23 uh, schools in Greater Accra have so far reported 56 cases and no fatality. And I'm not sure that parents have duly been informed. So if I come to that, we can look at the, the spread of the schools that are them. We have uh, averagely uh, 23 cases and total recovery zero uh, among others. But you can see that we also have some uh, suspected cases of about 166 that we are still uh, following up to see. And we have some staff also affected in the schools. Central region has also reported. Um, okay, let me talk first about the Akosombo one. As of 28th of January, a total of 500 in the Akosombo International one that has always been in the media. As of the, we had done a total of 553 samples have been tested, with 82 of them being positive. Uh, students were 73, and nine staff were positive. Um, a total of samples have also been collected and tested with 13 confirmed positive. That's after the 31st. And so that brings the total number test to about 600. That's almost the entire school has been tested. This was a result of a positive case at home that they decided to do uh, a test. The, the, greater, the, the national and the regional team has visited the school, done our assessment, given our recommendations on how to improve the social distancing among others protocol to cut down spreads. And so all of them are well and isolated. And those who are close contacts are still being observed so that we, do, so that we can contain uh, the spread. Central region and all, the whole region has reported eight cases from about seven or so schools. Two of them have already recovered. So they have six active cases among the schools in central uh, region. So that's it for the schools. When it comes to the first mark survey, we have, uh, as I said, the adherent portal on face marks in Greater Accra region. Uh, we have six target districts, uh, which are the current hotspots. Uh, we also visited 43 communities, including lorry parks, bus stops, busy streets, street intersections, overhead, under, um, under traffic lights, crossings, markets, and commercial centers, etc. Uh, the data was collected on 29 January, and then subsequent one has already been done. So unlike the previous one where we had about 42, the number of people wearing masks appropriately has improved moved from the 42% to 47%. Those not wearing masks at all is um, 29, and those not wearing correctly is 24%. So the, that's still quite... Uh, marginal improvement, we expect it to get a bit more. So we look at the morning and then um, afternoon. You can see that the morning is better. In the morning, we had about 52% wearing masks, as against 41% in the afternoon. I don't know whether it, were, it was the heat or whatever, but the number declined at that level. Uh, but the rest remained uh, the same. So that's the when you do a comparison in the morning. In that part. The next slide shows you the current trends in terms of wearing masks that since the seventh survey, we have seen move to 42% and now to 47%. We hope that the trend will continue going up. And while those who are not wearing masks at all will also continue coming, they haven't dropped from 36% to 29%. Those who are wearing masks who are not wearing masks correctly, are to move from 22 to 24%. So we are hoping that 
all of them will start coming down whilst the green one starts surging. So in conclusion, the wearing of masks already has increased from 42 to 47. There was no wearing masks at all. Decreased from 26 to 29. Um, base mask wearing is generally better in the morning than in the afternoon. And this applies to both adults and children. Uh, 59, 54 of children wore masks correctly in the morning and it dropped to 29.5% during the late afternoon. 51% of adults who wore masks correctly in the morning dropped to 43% late in the afternoon. So it looks like the afternoon is something we need to really make an effort to ensure that people keep their mask on in the afternoon. And also increase generally even the morning one. Generally, the correct wearing of the mask has seen an improvement in some communities that we visited. For example, in, this, in the previous survey, University of Ghana main entrance, we had 78% of the people who observed found to be wearing their face mask correctly compared to 84% uh, in the latest survey. Another example is the NIMA, where 70, nearly 74 of people wore, uh, were not observed wearing the face mask at all. In the previous survey, declined to 67%. And so there's an appreciable increase in the adherence to the protocols. The proportion of people who are wearing masks correctly in the face mask slightly higher among adults than for the children. The proportion who are not wearing the face mask at all were also slightly higher among males than the females. And Ayawa West District registered the highest proportion of people who were wearing the face mask correctly, 60.3%. And Ablokuma Central registered the lowest proportion uh, not wearing masks correctly at two, uh, almost 30, 37%, 36.9%. The top three communities located a uh, lo uh, location that had the highest proportion of people wearing the mask correctly were University of Ghana, Legon Main Entrance, and then the 37 military uh, hospital bus station. The top three communities where they, they have the highest proportion of people not wearing masks are the Nima Market, uh, Glyphilory Park, and a so far last stop, uh, bus stop, which is about 62% of them were not wearing masks at all. So let's take notes, and I hope they also get the message. So in conclusion, compared to the last survey, the number of people wearing the face mask already moved, increased from 42% to 47 I think this is just uh, a rehash of what we've done. We subsequently went on to do the protocol in some selected churches in Greater Accra. And these are some of the findings. The number of churches visited were about 38 in 14 districts. Um, we also had churches, um, 43 of the COVID safety protocol adherence, where the denominations were charismatic, orthodox, Pentecostal, evangelical, Adventist, and spiritual churches we all attended. The sizes of the churches, we have very large churches, as those, we are classified as those very large churches with over 1,000 um, membership, between 500 and 999, uh, the large, medium of uh, 100 to 500, and the small, that is those under 100. The period of visit assessment was on Saturday and Sunday during the entire church service. Uh, the observation and count of church members of how they, fear, or they wore the face mask was done. And then we also look at checklists to ad on adherence to COVID protocol that uh, was done. So what were the findings? We realized that about 90% of membership in those churches wore the mask correctly. 6% not correctly. And then about, um, about three or so, 4% were not wearing the mask at all in church. Comparing the proportion of wives and the general population, you can see that in the church is 90% compared to 47% in the general population. So the churches are doing much, much, much better. We had more uh, females 
um, that were obesity. I mean, the, 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 well, the population, about 62% were females against 38% male. So you can see that we had for not wearing uh, comparative, it's about the same between male and female, so there's a no wearing mask at all. It's about the same, 54.3 to 4.1% between male and female. Uh, not wearing correctly, it's about 56, 5.6 5 against 5.8. So that we didn't see significant changes between males and females, whether they wear them well or they wore at all. So if you look at the members, members, you can see for the church members, about 91.7% were wearing masks properly. When it came to the ushers, protocols and security, it dropped to 85.9% wearing masks. When it came to the pastors, priests, and elders, it dropped to 82% wearing masks properly. And then the choristers was the lowest, 62%. 0.6% wear a mask. If you look at also in terms of the classification of the churches, the larger churches were doing better in terms of wearing the mask. About 98.6% of the large churches wore their masks religiously, and then it drops to 73% for the, the small churches. So when it comes to the protocols, we looked at availability of one location at the church, that is uh, where, um, when it comes to temperature screening, we had 25% when having the uh, temperature 13 had some means of checking temperature, about five of them had no method of checking temperature at all, so that is in breach of the protocol that we disagree with them. Hand hygiene, we had about 7% um, uh, available of the 43 churches, 44, 43 churches we visited, 7% had none at all. They had it available. Utilization also dropped to about 88%. So having is one, using is another. So there's a slight drop in the number of people who actually use the availability of hand hygiene uh, protocols. Alcohol wrap, only 81% had alcohol wrap to spray in their hands to, to clean. And about 19% of these 43 churches had, did not have. For social distancing, we looked at adequate space arrangement of church pews and to ensure uh, distance, social distance in church, about 88% had. We had also church, where they maintained distance during sitting at the service, we had about 79.1%. Querises and singing maintained social distancing, it dropped to 74.4%. Church maintained, maintained social distancing during uh, interacting during each other during the church service about dropped to about 41.9 percent, and four nine point three percent of four churches allowed handshaking in church. <laughs> when it comes to the use of the microscope, the microphone, sorry, the choir members and they are singers exchange microphone, who are exchanging microphones during the singing was about 48%. They were exchanging microphone. Only 41% actually frequently sanitized the microphones that they were exchanging among themselves. So that's a major challenge that has to be addressed. Risk communication. Posters, do they, do they have posted information about the face mask use Yes, about 81% um, had um, the information on posters. Were they making audio announcements uh, in the two risk communications? Yes, that's also that number dropped about the use of hand hygiene and well, as much. The duration of church service. Four 
47% uh, actually went beyond the acceptable uh, duration against 53%. So in summary, 90% of all members of the church, that is 38 churches, visited wore their masks correctly, 6% were not. There was no difference between the proportion of wearing, mask face mask wearing between males and females, and the proportion of face mask wearing was the highest among the church members uh, compared to the, um, the ushers, as I mentioned, the protocol and security. So it and then pastors also, the use of masks had dropped to about 83 Percent choristers and singers dropped significantly to 63 percent, especially when you know that during singing is when you can actually share the most, the highest number of uh, viruses. That is something that's worrying. Proportion of correct wearing of masks was highest in the large churches, 99 percent, uh, compared to 88 percent among the lower, the smaller churches. We found that um, one church in Wajabawi had the highest proportion of members wearing the face mask correctly, 98.6%, compared to a church in Okaike North that had 80% uh, wearing masks only. So that's um, two churches had all members wearing masks, uh, and we we'll send them uh, a note of appreciation. Uh, we can't mention their name here. So. Some of the recommendations is that in the church, everybody must wear a mask. If you feel that you can't wear a mask during singing, they don't sing. Because that's when you really shed most of the bar. All ushers, security members, should wear masks at all times. For so they are the ones who come in contact with nearly everybody. So that if they are not wearing masks, they create more danger to the population, who people who are protecting themselves. The no mask, no entry, and the maintenance of wearing of mask during should be enforced in all churches. We are also encouraging churches to keep record of people who attend churches so that in the event of an outbreak, we are able to do contact tracing. We should ensure that the hand hygiene facilities are provided and utilized. Alcohol wrap should be encouraged in church the leadership to ensure that members do not shake hands in church. Very, very important. Regular announcement of the safety protocols should be uh, encouraged to be done more frequently, and the church should ensure that duration of stays, stays within the two hours that has been recommended as part of the restriction and the recommendations made. So in conclusion, broadly, the, the daily case incidents has been rising from the end of December has, has however remained high, but the number has remained stable in the last almost a week or so, and we are hoping that the number will start coming down. But of course, that depends on what we do. There's been a significant decline in the cases at Kotoka International Airport. There's been an observed improvement in the face mask use and adherence to the protocol generally. Uh, minus sporadic cases. <laughs>